Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. On today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report, I'm going to speak about compartment syndrome. There are two types of compartment syndrome. There is acute compartment syndrome and chronic compartment syndrome. I'm going to speak about both of those today, but specifically about chronic compartment syndrome. I already did a video on what's the difference between shin splints and compartment syndrome. So go ahead and watch that one after this video is complete. I will put a link to that in the description box below. Compartment syndrome occurs when the tissue pressure within a compartment exceeds the amount of pressure it takes to push blood through the blood vessels in that compartment. This results in a reduced amount of blood flow to the muscles and nerves of the compartment. This is named ischemia. The causes of compartment syndrome vary, but most commonly it is related to acute trauma or overuse. Compartment syndrome can occur in numerous locations, including the thigh, forearm, hand, wrist, and lower leg. In the lower leg, it can occur in any of the four compartments, anterior, lateral, superficial posterior, or deep posterior. Today, I am speaking about compartment syndrome in the front of the lower leg, known as tibial anterior compartment syndrome. The muscles of the lower leg anterior compartment include the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, and fibularis tertius. The tibialis anterior muscle dorsiflexes and inverts the ankle. The extensor digitorum longus extends toes two, three, four, and five and dorsiflex the ankle. The concentric actions of the extensor hallucis longus are great toe extension and ankle dorsiflexion. When contracted concentrically, the fibularis tertius, which is also known as the peroneus tertius, performs dorsiflexion and ankle eversion. These four muscles are all innervated by the deep perineal nerve from vertebral levels L4, L5, and S1. The deep perineal nerve is also known as the deep fibular nerve. It is a branch of the common perineal nerve, which is also known as the common fibular nerve. The common perineal nerve is a branch of the sciatic nerve. Blood flow to the anterior compartment of the lower leg is supplied by the anterior tibial artery. Trauma is the most common cause of compartment syndrome. Other causes of anterior lower leg compartment syndrome can vary widely. Tibial fracture is the most common cause of compartment syndrome. Traumatic compartment syndrome may be more common in men than in women. The incidence of chronic exertional compartment syndrome is a relatively common cause of leg pain in athletes, especially running athletes. In chronic exertion compartment syndrome, the symptoms are commonly bilateral and both genders are equally affected. Compartment syndrome results from increased compartment pressure. When the systemic blood pressure is inadequate to overcome the pressure within a compartment, ischemia of its contents occurs. It can be acute or chronic depending on the mechanism of injury. Disclaimer alert. If you think you have compartment syndrome, please see a medical professional immediately. Acute compartment syndrome is a medical emergency. Do not hesitate. If you have chronic compartment syndrome, please see a medical professional to get an evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment recommendations. If you are performing rehabilitation exercises, if an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, please stop immediately and find a viable substitute. Never ever perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. Always begin your rehabilitation exercises at your current health, fitness, and strength levels. Never start at the level that you used to be at before the injury or at a previous level. Always start at your current health, fitness, and strength levels. Chronic exertional compartment syndrome is often abbreviated to CECS. 
It is a reversible condition caused by repetitive activity and resolves with succession of that particular activity. In some rare instances where the athlete continues the activity, irreversible acute compartment syndrome can develop. Symptoms include intense pain that is deep burning or aching or a fullness, swelling, or tense feeling. A pins and needles sensation, numbness or tingling is present. In tibial anterior compartment syndrome, an inability to dorsiflex the ankle may be present. A description of it as feeling dead or weak may be present. Tenderness is usually felt in the muscle bellies, typically in the middle and distal one-third of the lower leg. Pain increases with passive ankle plantar flexion. Ankle inversion and ankle eversion may also be reduced. The strength of the pulses in the lower leg will be diminished. The symptoms of chronic exertional compartment syndrome increase with a specific activity and resolve with succession of that activity. The onset and resolution of symptoms can be reliably predicted. The treatment protocols. If the source of compartment syndrome is trauma, please see a medical professional immediately. This is an emergency situation and needs immediate action. I'm gonna repeat that again. If the source of compartment syndrome is acute and traumatic, please see a medical professional immediately. This is an emergency situation and needs immediate action. In chronic exertional compartment syndrome, immediately modify your training. Eliminate or greatly reduce the volume of the exercise that is the main contributing factor. Find a viable substitute and use proper technique. Train hard, but train smart. Give yourself adequate rest between training sessions. Receive chiropractic care and massage therapy on a consistent basis. You can perform self-massage techniques and utilize proper stretching techniques. Provide your body ample time to recover between training sessions. Get on a consistent sleep schedule and utilize nutrition and supplementation strategies that fit your individual needs. Compartment syndrome is a serious medical condition if it is acute or chronic. Please see a medical professional. If it is acute, see a medical professional immediately. Do not hesitate. If it is chronic, you can see a medical professional like myself, I'm a doctor of chiropractic, or you can see another type of medical professional. Obviously, I recommend that you see a doctor of chiropractic and a massage therapist on a regular basis. If you perform self-massage, please use mild pressure. You don't need to use moderate pressure. You don't need to use an intense amount of pressure. Do yourself a big favor and use a mild amount of pressure. You could use your thumb or the palm of your hand and do trigger point therapy, or you can do long strokes that are going to help to reduce the muscle tension. So please only use mild pressure when you are performing self massage. Thank you everyone for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You could visit my website, Championship Chiropractic, where you could find out more information on the book and you could also find my blog. My blog contains articles on chiropractic care, spine health, running injuries, sports medicine, health, fitness, and nutrition. The book is available in paperback and in ebook formats. You could find it on amazon.com. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching and always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between your training sessions utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you and accomplish your goals.